Hello everyone and welcome. Sit back, relax, make a cup of tea or whatever you like to drink and get ready for new stories from Yellow Cat. Send your own favorite stories in the comments below and maybe they'll be in our new video. So subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed yet and let's get started. What was the most ludicrous reason someone at your place of employment was let go? Boss was the executive director of a nonprofit organization with two employees and volunteers all over the state, and was an hour away from there. The state agency had already gently warned her not to trust the office manager with her work. She had to do it herself. When I declined to fabricate receipts from a conference she claimed she had lost for an impending audit, she knew I wouldn't play along. Even if those receipts were authentic, I wasn't present for the conference. I still wouldn't have done it. She told me not to come in that morning under any circumstances and left the file on my computer, so I realized then that she was trying to replace me in a covert manner and quit on the spot. She gave to drive in, which infuriated her. She was turned in by my replacement. When she got to the board, she informed them of all of her absences and other wrongdoings. I had attempted to do so earlier, but the president had written me off as exaggerating the situation. The supervisor then told them and me that they had conducted an exit interview while I had declined to do so. You see, she didn't think that everyone is ethical, not just me. To support my replacement, I called. Guess who was involved in the boss's firing? Guess who was asked to assist with running the place a few months later? Regretfully, I was not allowed to be present in the room when she was fired. Subsequently, the president expressed his curiosity about why she would consistently visit their center in the morning rather than her job in my city. You guys, she wasn't going to work. She was faking it. Saying good morning to people was my boss's obsession. He used to say good morning to everyone he saw every morning. However, occasionally he would only say it in passing and not even look you in the eye. He once said good morning to me in passing as I turned to face him, so he missed my answer. The regulars at this workplace knew the routine and our departments had a revolving door of staff, so when new people were hired on for our departments, we would warn them. The boss is really obsessed with his good morning greetings and takes it as a massive personal offense if you do not loudly respond back. He stopped in his tracks and was apparently having a particularly bad day. He raises his voice to say, I said good effing morning. Being an owner herself, his wife adopted this practice as well. We had a new employee who had only been there for a few weeks and was still on probation. I guess no one explained to him the significance of these greetings and that you should always expect them. One day, he came in visibly wearing headphones and proceeded to the staff room to store his belongings and coat before the shift began. The poor employee did not hear the boss's good morning greeting. The boss approaches me, the next thing I know, red in the face and utterly enraged. He began rambling on about how the boy had disregarded him, how effing disrespectful he was, and how he had never liked that guy. That day, he visited a number of the regulars and could not stop grousing about how terrible that guy was. For the entire day, he was unable to let it go. At the end of his shift, the poor guy was fired. There are no ludicrous reasons, only ludicrous things people did to get fired. We made deliveries at the paint store where I was employed. I took the new student under my wing, taught him how to operate the truck, etc. We sent him out on his own after we made a few deliveries together. The following day, my boss receives an email from an apartment building containing security video showing the child using the truck to smash through a few bricks in the building's exterior wall. Then, he would stop the truck, get out, look around, put his hands behind his head in the traditional OS pose, get back in the truck, and drive off. When my boss confronted him at work, he first denied hitting anything and then attempted to tell a falsehood claiming that I had made the run to the apartment building. The boss then compares my bald self with his mop of red hair in the picture. He was released. Same location. The new assistant manager had a deep affection for women. 
After female customers left, he would always be the first to assist them and compliment them on how attractive they were. In addition, he was a big a-hole to us, our manager, our patrons, and staff members and supervisors at other establishments. That is, until the day he met my coworker and fell in love while she was serving a customer. He said to the coworker, thanks for making me look good in front of my future ex-wife after she had left. Those were the magic words that unlocked the worms, leading to an investigation and his termination. I work in a hospital now. For whatever reason, the employee is furious with the scheduler and responds to an email sent to the entire department in which almost a hundred staff members launch into an extended diatribe against the scheduler. Fired the next day without warning. 90% of the staff is younger than the older employee who recently started and decided she wouldn't listen to anyone younger. She would argue with or ignore anyone who tried to explain something to her. She attempts one day to combine ammonia and bleach there in the laboratory. Fortunately, other staff members forced her to stop, but not before they had to yell until they were blue in the face. She then swore at them and informed them that they had no idea what they were doing. The boss was informed and termination procedures were set in place. If she had been successful, the entire hospital could have been evacuated. We had suspicions about someone stealing our food, but we couldn't identify them. The manager posted signs asking people not to steal food. Please let me know if you're hungry so I can make up something discreet for you. News spread that one of our department's regular housekeepers, PC for janitor, was caught in another department robbing the refrigerator in their break room. The moment he was let go, the thefts ceased. After discovering a credit card on the ground, a hospital transport staff member went on a shopping binge. When she showed up for work the following day, the police had located her and met her. The peculiar thing was that by then, this worker had been there for 11 years. She had undoubtedly witnessed others try the same thing and suffer the same outcome. Multiple violations of HIPAA. In our town, a store robbery that we experienced became quite public. Few individuals were discovered looking through the charts of the officers while they were in the hospital, even though it was not necessary for them to do so. Few people were discovered using Facebook to leak information to the media about their health. The event was of such great importance that the officers' charts were closely monitored and subject to strict restrictions. Anyone who had access to their charts was tracked down and looked into. Those who were caught in those charts at an improper time were released. Another social worker made the decision to search the system for everyone she had ever met. Within hours, compliance discovered that 75 accounts had been accessed using her name. She was dismissed right away. It was her first day. Lunch lasts for just 30 minutes. A few employees were observed checking out for their lunch break, checking back in, and then leaving the office for one or two hours at a time to eat at upscale sit-down restaurants. Dismissed for stealing time. Share your horrible experiences slash story from living in an HOA, condominium, or with jerk neighbors. Attending the condo board meeting seemed like a kind of neighborly obligation when I first moved in. Even though they were usually scheduled during difficult-to-get-to times, I still showed up on the few occasions that I was able to. I saw the following, a 45-minute discussion about the color of the squash and pumpkins in the cornucopia in the fall display in the lobby, someone planted flowers in the planters in front of the building, an elderly woman would keep a notebook of violations that she saw while riding the 22-story high-rise elevators. This was the last meeting I attended. There was a man who shouted down roof repairs. West-facing condos were getting leaks. These were illegal and were pulled out by the roots and left in front of the offender's door in a plastic grocery bag. My condo faces east, was his response, calling it a waste of money. Is the common area outside of the snow cleaned up? Money wasted. 
Improving the fire sprinkler system and building security a financial waste. He raises his hand in response to his wife whispering in his ear saying, My wife is not happy with a pool at the high rise across the street. Please consider putting a pool in the building. Let's see, we had a discussion about dog leash laws during our annual meeting. The current HOA president, a dog owner, and the previous HOA president, a grumpy old bee, had a conversation that lasted for well over an hour. We found that the current president was not in violation of the city's laws and that his dog obeyed him when called. That's all you needed to know. Apart from that particularly memorable one, every meeting we have is complete and utter BS. The hellos last for 10 minutes before the shouting wars break out between the new and old HOA presidents. We now have a management company on board that takes care of everything for us. When my condo security light goes out, I'm unable to even change it. Instead, I have to email the management company who contacts the HOA to find out if the light needs to be changed or replaced. After I moved in, they effing put the light up without letting me say no. Nothing gets accomplished. The good people are gradually leaving the neighborhood and none of the current board members want to remain on the board. HOAs are a joke. Never again. My husband was asked to run for a position on our condo HOA board. He encountered a lot of this is the way we've always done things after being elected, and they were unwilling to hear any fresh perspectives. Parking was one specific problem in this community. A single parking permit, good for parking in permit-marked spaces, could be applied for by each resident. You would have to park the other car inside your garage if you had to. Even when garages were unloading, the commissioned tow truck company had a field day towing cars that were parked in front of them. In any case, numerous new renters spoke up during a board meeting to voice their concerns about receiving tickets or having their property towed. The appeals panel rejected all of the requests. They started pardoning their own parking infractions when it came time for the private board meeting, mother was visiting and didn't realize she couldn't park in any space, working on my car, etc. As they weren't even remotely forgiving of the tenants, my husband thought this was wrong and refused to vote in favor of pardoning their tickets or paying for their towing expenses. The board, who were all retirees or stay-at-home moms, became enraged and decided to move their meetings to a weekday at 3 p.m. when they knew he couldn't attend due to work. They then enacted a rule that stated you would be removed from the board if you failed to show up for more than one meeting. My husband was squeezed out as a result. We moved to a house without a homeowners association, but we still own a condo there. Thank God. Actually, horrible story didn't begin until this past week. The woman who served as the COA treasurer a few years ago assisted us in voting to increase the monthly fee from $50 to $75. As an example, we recently had to pay three times as much to quickly fix a knockdown fence that was up against several units, which put us in the red. The idea was to save the money as an emergency fund in case of accidents. We also had a terrible experience with roof replacement, which we only discovered after a hailstorm badly damaged the subpar roof installation. After that, our insurance company refused to pay for some of the necessary repairs. In any case, we discover that the COA is being embezzled by our treasurer. The awful part is not this. In order to get things under control, another young woman who just so happens to work for the city and has connections offers to serve as both treasurer and property manager temporarily. We give her a pitiful $300 per month for her services and vote her in. She completes more work for the COA in a year and a half than I have seen in three years of previous meetings and votes combined. She's simply amazing. She recovers all embezzled money, gets all but two owners up to date on payments, arranges payment plans, and files legal actions. Then, last week, the man who possesses 11 of our 32 apartments, including the three that the embezzler had before going into foreclosure, and which he promptly acquired, saunters in, votes to fire her, and disappears for two years. 
because he thinks the other owners will volunteer to take care of things for which $300 is too much to pay someone. Since I live with my parents, I've never had to deal with the HOA directly. However, I am aware of their spiral into madness. The original purpose of our HOA was to raise funds for pool upkeep, and that's it. We formed a neighborhood pool to collect dues because we wanted one. That's essentially it. No fence laws or lawn rules or anything foolish like that. At first, our HOA was good. The pool was constructed by them, and a man comes every day to maintain it and handle all the chemical work. Periodically, we also purchase beautiful new furniture when the other stuff gets old or ugly. Additionally, it was forbidden to use weird house colors. However, as far as I'm aware, you're still allowed to use any color as long as it's the appropriate shade, deep purples, light blues, etc. Not too horrible, is it? It was passable at best. Our neighborhood featured a lovely pool. It was not gonna endure. This crazy person, who detested my father, was elected president. She began to drive by our house and call the police whenever she saw a car parked in the street with its wheels facing the wrong direction. Very small-minded. She recently passed a legislation limiting the amount of time cars could be left on the road for 48 hours before being towed or moved. Even though it might seem insignificant, having to get up and move your car around a block to avoid having it towed gets old really quick. She didn't limit herself to this law. She started introducing a whole bunch of new ones. From lawn heights to what you can and can't have in your yard, all of these little things were annoying. My parents were very angry. They decided to talk to the neighbors and deal with this woman. As it turns out, she hated not only my father, but others as well. So they got the neighbors together to re-elect this woman. My father was the one who ran for her seat, and 80% of the owners voted for him. I wish I'd seen the former president's face when she realized she'd lost. As president, my father abolished all the rules and laws she instituted and only monitored the general welfare of the neighborhood. And the nice bonus is that after a few months, the former president moved out. Thank you for subscribing, the likes, and comments. We're very happy to see you all in the comments, too. Thanks for your support.